Hi everyone and welcome to lesson three of databases. In this lesson what we're going to look at is searching and sorting our databases. So we're going to have a look at the different ways we can search for relevant information and then also how we sort the information that we find. Okay so hopefully by the end of this lesson you'll be able to explain why databases are useful. You'll also be able to explain what a database search is and what it's used for and also explain what it means to sort a database and the results that we get. So for your starter, um, you should also have your task sheet three opened up front of you. I want you to sort the shopping list first alphabetically by fruit and then again by price in descending order. Okay, so you can pause this video and again on your task sheet there is space for you to write your answers. So I want the fruit listed alphabetically and then the price listed beside it in descending order. So when we're talking about searching a database, obviously we know that databases hold loads and loads of information in the tables. Okay, so the reason we search databases is just to find information um, that we want answers to quickly and easily. So by searching a database, what we're going to do is reduce the number of records that we see making it easy to find the information that we want. And now there's two ways that we can search a database. The first one being a simple search, and that's where I would search for something in only one field of the table, okay? So if I wanted to search a database table that contained information about all school pupils, for example, and I wanted to complete a simple search by searching for only the field of all S6 pupils. Okay, that would be a simple search because I would narrow the database table down to only the records that held all S6 pupils. So that's what a simple search is by just using one field to search. I can also then use a complex search and that's what is going to give me even more specific uh, results and f nine times out of ten fewer records as well. Okay, so a complex search is using either different values within the same field. So I can look for all S6 and S5 pupils, for example. So there I'm putting two searches in the one field, or I could search using more than one field. So if I wanted all S6 pupils in Dunglass House, that would then narrow the search down even more. So we started off with the database table full of every single pupil in the school and now with my complex search for all S6 pupils in Dunglass House I'm going to get less records shown. So task 12 for this lesson is just to kind of get you into search queries. I want you to visit the INDB website okay, and search for answers to the following queries. So as you'll see there's four questions there. And if you visit the website, you'll be able to navigate their database and try and find the answers to all of those questions. So again, pause this video whilst you do that and add them into your task sheet on test task 12 and then resume playing this video. OK, so moving on to task 14. Now we want to look at how we sort the results that we find from the database. So we know how to complete a search, either simple or complex. That's going to return um, lots of records for us. OK, but now we want to be able to sort those in order. So we can either use what's known as ascending order, which goes from smallest to largest. So as you can see the arrow here, it goes from either A to Z, or 1 to 100. So we're going from the smallest value to the largest, and that's what's known as ascending. On the other hand, we've got descending, which is just the complete opposite, going from the largest value to the smallest. So in this example, 100 to 1 or Z to A. OK, and there are the two ways we can sort our information. Now, it doesn't have to be just numerical values. As you can see, there's A to Z. It can go alphabetical and um, there's lots of different ways we can do that. So sorting order is ascending and descending. I want you to copy these terms into your task sheet before moving on. So for task 15 and task 16, you're going to pause this video 
and watch the other video that I uploaded along with this notification. There I demonstrate how to use the other database that we're going to use to help us answer the questions for these two tasks. Okay, so pause this video, watch the other video and complete those questions for task 15 and task 16 in your task sheet and then resume this video for the final plenary task. Okay, so now that you've finished task 15 and 16, it's now time to do the plenary task. What you're going to do is have a look at the questions on the task sheet and then use this database table to help you answer them. So for example, if I asked you for the name of the animal um, born on the 27th of the 12th, 2014, for example, you would have a look at the date of birth, look for the one that is born on the 27th of the 12th, 2014, and you would know that it's a spaniel dog named Jess. Okay, so it's as straightforward as that. You've only got a couple of those questions to complete for the plenary task, and then we're going to finish the lesson. So that is the end of lesson three complete. What I would like you to do is just kind of self-evaluate and then add that onto your task sheet. Do you think that you can explain why databases are useful? If you do, give yourself five stars. If you're not so sure, give yourself fewer stars and we can discuss that during tutorials. Can you explain what a database search is? Do you know which two searches are available? And also, can you explain what it means to sort a database? And can you name maybe the two ways in which we sort the information that we find? And that's the end of lesson three. So very well done, guys. Point.